It is my honor to share the word today. And I want us to have an open heart. To be honest, if your heart is not open, you might as well go home. You might as well. If your heart is not open to what God is saying, what's the point of you being here? The Bible says he sent forth the word. The word healed them. It delivered them from destruction. So the word is so powerful that if you're here with any challenge, God's word grants you automatic victory in the name of Jesus. This morning I'll be sharing about the God kind of faith. Can I hear you say the God kind of faith? There is a faith that brings results. There is this kind of faith that brings results. There is this kind of faith that never accepts defeat. And I'm going to share with us this morning from the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verses 32. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 32. Can we all read it together? Three, two, one, go. Gideon. And of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdom, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness was made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned the flight of armies of the aliens. Now, please tell me which challenge is not wrapped up in here. Just think about all the challenges you could ever think about. Which one is not wrapped up in the scriptures? This is by faith, they quenched the violence of fire. By faith. So this subject of faith is one that we must really look into. Because it seems like we are not exercising our faith just as God wants. What more shall I say? Paul says, time will not permit me to tell of Gideon. So there was something Gideon did that was not natural. For Paul to talk about Gideon. Ah. And he says of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah. Of David also, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith, through faith, faith gives color to Christianity. Faith gives color to Christianity. Faith makes you to stand in the midst of opposition and yet still be in control. Faith is a subject that must, we must master to live this Christian race. Amen. I'd like to read to us Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. And I want us to have, like I said earlier, an open heart as we read this. Let God minister to you. So from today, you will start to operate in this God kind of faith in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. It says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. There's a reason Jesus said that. That men ought always to pray and not faint. Why? Because men always faint. Verse 2, saying there was a city, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine enemies, of my adversaries. And he would not for a while. Many of us get stuck in this for a while issue. We've prayed about it so you conclude God does not want you to have it. There are certain things we've prayed about. We've just given up because it seems, I'm not saying God cannot do it, but it seems he doesn't want to give me. So you come up with a, an ideology. 
you come up with the conclusion in your mind that it's not your time. An excuse. Thank you. He would not for a while. This judge would not just listen. The Bible calls him the unjust judge. And he would not for a while, but after, after what he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, this judge was so unjust, he even talked about God. I don't fear you. And this was Jesus explaining the story of an unjust man in authority that did not fear the one that is authority. Yet because this widow troubles me, there is a troubling that comes from this widow. That every time the judge comes to walk, he's troubled by the, just knowing the widow is outside. This dramatic widow. She would not take no for an answer. She knows we are corrupt. Yes, she's still coming for justice. She knows he's an unjust judge, yet she's asking for justice. Less by her continual coming, verses 5, she weary me. Verse 6 is interesting. The Bible says, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. By her continual coming, she wearies me. She troubles me. Verse 7 says, and shall not God avenge his own elect? Can I hear amen? amen. Which cry day and night unto him. Though he bear long with them, are there things in your heart that you are, are there prayers that you prayed always in your heart, day and night, day and night? Does it seem sometimes that God doesn't hear certain prayers? Jesus was explaining to them, He said, The unjust judge got so tired of this woman banging the door, asking for justice. Jesus says, What about your God? Verse 8 is the response to Jesus' story. He says, I tell you that he would avenge them, what? Speedily. And the parable ends with a question that we must all ask ourselves. He says, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Is, can Jesus find faith in your heart right now as we speak? He gave the parable, but he asked the question at the end of the day. Shall the son of man, when he comes, shall he find faith in you? So the question this morning is, do you have faith? This kind of faith. That though you are crying day and night, knowing fully well that the Lord will come through. You know, a lot of uh, folks that are believers sometimes always look defeated. Sometimes they are stressed out. They've a a allowed and concluded that God cannot solve all problems because of the way they act. Sometimes you speak to some believers and you are confused after the conversation. That do you really believe in this thing we've been talking about? Jesus is saying... When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth? And that's a question that we must ask ourselves. Are we operating in this God kind of faith? Are we operating in this God kind of faith? Amen. So what is faith? Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 35 and 36. What is faith? It says... Here, it is the practical expression of confidence in God. A practical expression of your confidence in God. That's what faith is. A practical ex expression of your confidence in God and in his word. It says, cast not away, therefore your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive a promise. Do not cast your confidence away. Believe God. 
But in the month of October, we've gone from January to October. It is time to start to believe God that the promises, what he has told you, will come to pass. Enough, enough of this Well, I'm not sure. No, no, no. Tell, find a promise in the scripture and stand on it. And say, in the name of Jesus, I will not fail. In the name of Jesus, I will not falter. It is possible not to fail and falter. If God cannot fix your problem, brethren, no man can fix your problem. If God cannot fix your problem, to even ask a man is an insult to God. The book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 11, or verses 11 to 30, talks about these three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It says, And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, he that should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded. Brethren, there was a situation in their life just like everyone has situations in their life. Theirs was just different. If you do not bow down to the image of the king, we will kill you. What are the things that are challenging your lives? What are the things that you are struggling with? What are the images and the situations that are asking you to bow down? The Bible says in verse 13, Then Kadnezer, in his rage and fury, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, then they brought this man before him. Verses 14 says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, and said unto them, is it true? Are situations asking you? Have you been in a situation where it feels like the situation is talking to you directly? Like, bro, just bow. Let's just move forward. Just bow down to this stuff. I know you've been asking God for, for healing. I know you've been asking God for a spouse. I know you've been asking God for, for a peaceful marriage. Don't worry. Marriages should be troubling. And it feels like in life, people are just accepting the voice of the enemy. But we see in the scripture that those boys said, we know better. We know better. Our God whom we, are, we serve is able to deliver us, O king. But even if he chooses not to deliver us, we will not bow. Let your faith come to a, a state where you know even if God does not solve it, I'm happy. Even if God does not solve it, if he chooses not to solve it, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with him. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 6, we are told that he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What are the things you're praying about? Do you even believe God? Do you even acknowledge God as you pray? Do, you know, sometimes you could be in a prayer meeting. Hey, let's pray about Jack. Jack, 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 Jack. And at the end of the day, you are like, ah. You do, I mean, there's no connectivity. You must first come to a conclusion that God exists. That God is, God is right in front of me. So when you, when you go to God, you go to him knowing that he is. Acknowledge him. Father, acknowledge your word. I acknowledge your word. You know, the Bible talks in the book of James about how just discussing faith is not good enough. Many people talk about faith. Oh, I claim the keyboard. I claim the drums. I claim the choir. And then you're almost a magician, just claiming everything. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 and verses 18. It says, even so, 
Faith, if he had not works, is dead. What are the things that you are believing God for? Faith can be seen. Faith can be seen. Have you promised a child something before? Tomorrow we'll buy you McDonald's. You think they forget? Oh, they wake up in the morning. Good morning, Dad. Ah, you look at the time. It says only 4 a.m. His, his works is what? He wakes up early. The child that has never brushed his teeth will brush his teeth, iron the clothes. Ah, you say, Johnny, it's just 4 a.m. Say, Dad, don't worry. I've even prayed for you. You don't have to pray. Daddy, I've, don't worry. I've drank your coffee for you in the spirit. Let's just go to McDonald's. Works. And as we're laughing about this, think about the things that you believe but you don't walk towards. You're believing to have a peaceful marriage. Peaceful. Yet you, you don't walk towards it. You just claim peaceful marriage. You claim. I claim a peaceful marriage in Jesus' name. I'm not pointing at anyone. I just claim a peaceful marriage in Jesus' name. There must be works. You must walk towards it. Your walking towards it is standing on God's word. It's standing on God's word. We are almost at the end of the year. What are the things that God has promised you that you are not walking out? What are the things God has promised? What are the things you have said to God I will do that you are not doing? He says, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. It is time to apply God's word to everything we are doing. We've gone to a point where it seems like no one is expecting the miraculous anymore. No one is, people are not expecting to walk on water anymore. People are, I mean, you must walk it out. Amen. You know, one of the women preachers, Mary, she told a group of men, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And you know, I was pondering through that. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Why did she say that, Pastor? I'll tell you why. Because he knew that Jesus would say something that they would not be able to comprehend. Because she said, to, I mean, Jesus could have said to them, hey guys, come here. Pull what? No. He called them aside and had a pre-meeting before the meeting. He says, guys, come. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. The question I'm asking you tonight, what is the Lord telling us to do? What are the things that God has been telling you about year upon year, month upon month, day upon day? What are those things that you have numbed it, you've ignored it? Because it looks so impossible, there's no point talking about it. He says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. John chapter 2 verses 1 to 9. And the Bible says, Jesus said to those men, fill the water pots with water. I mean, brothers and sisters, that's no joke. Imagine yourself in that situation. Just imagine yourself. Brother, okay, please come. Please come. Please stand here. Imagine pastor telling him, yes, sir, go and fill my car with water. He says, sir, is it the radiator? He says, no, the gas. I mean, we laugh about this, but this was exactly what the guys were faced with. They were in a party. Everybody is now, now look at him weird. If he even tries it, the eyes in this place will bring you down. Because everyone must have looked at him like, y'all crazy. Go fill the, the, the water pot with water. They must have got it to a point that they did not look at anybody else. They were in a party, so there was a crowd there. And they were filling the water. I'm sure they were asking themselves, ah. <laughs> I mean, I'm pouring water there. What, what am I expecting? Yes, sir. Pour water now in pastor's car. <laughs> Thank you. And as they 
proceeded to pour water in there. I don't know what the state of their mind was. But God is asking us this morning, fill your life with water. The water of the word. Pour the word in your life and it will turn to wine. It will turn to wine. It will turn to wine. Now, the water might seem when you read the scripture, sometimes you're just like, you know, God, can this really be? He's saying, don't worry. Just keep pouring that water into your spirit, man. Keep pouring it into your spirit, man. And what was the result of pouring water into the water pot? It turned to wine. Amen. Faith mirrors the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. It says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it is possible that you walk in this supernatural faith, in this God kind of faith. How do you walk in this God kind of faith? By hearing God's word. Hear God's word concerning your life. Hear God's word. Hear God's word. If you are single, start praying. It is, it is not good for a man to be alone. That man will not sleep in the name of Jesus. He is not sleeping. He's looking for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I am beautifully and wonderfully made. Woo! Look at me in the mirror. Jesus! Woo! I am so beautiful. I am wonderfully made in the name of Jesus. Oh, when I speak, you will hear the voice of angels. In the, and now I'm talking about ladies. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. Zado bakataya. In the name of Jesus. When he sees me, oh, my face will be shining like that of Moses. Woo! Shalabarabosa. The glory of God is risen upon me. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, when I meet him, ah, let me recognize. Woo! Let me align myself with him. In the mighty name of Jesus. As funny as that sounds, start to say that every day. Then you proceed to the next one. Lord, when we get married, oh, it shall be a blissful marriage. A stress-free, it's free marriage in the name of Jesus. Oh, we will love each other. When I say good morning, he will hear good morning. He will not hear what's wrong with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. When I take off my wig, I'll still look as beautiful as I have my wig. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus. Woo, my aroma is so, I mean, can I carry on? And try that every day. Write it on your mirror. As you walk past the mirror, look at yourself and say, Whoa, beautiful. Jesus, I give you praise. As I walk, Lord, I'm telling you, as funny as that sounds, you start to declare the word. You start to declare the Don't look angry all the time and say spiritual. No. Nobody wants to marry an angry, spiritually angry looking person. Let the word bring joy. You say in the name of Jesus, I'll be the best husband. Ah! Oh, Jesus. I will be the best husband. She will wake up and say, even if I just met you next year, I will marry you again. In Jesus' name. She will not regret marrying me. I will be the head and not the tail. The city set upon the hill that cannot be hid. I will walk upon waters in the mighty name of Jesus. My marriage will not be sorrowful in the name of Jesus. I command joy. I align my life with peace. I declare in the name of Jesus, two of us will put thousand ten thousands to flight in the name of jesus our life will not be void of prayers our our head will not lack oil in the name of jesus the bible says faith cometh by what by hearing so let me explain this hearing first you hear the word of god then you say it and you hear yourself say the word of god and as you begin to speak the word you begin to hear what has come into your spirit as you begin to hear it, you begin to reflect on it and it becomes a mirror. You start mirroring your life. Father, it seems like, you know, my wife is really upsetting me. But I declare in the name of Jesus, joy. I correct it. Ah, she cannot upset me. Lord, every time she does that thing, let me just be laughing. Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! Let it be like joy in the name of Jesus. You know, we're laughing about this. Have you spoken to people? Have you spoken to people? Some people just wake up angry. They just look at the woman and say, ah. But you declare the word into your life. Take it serious. This God kind of faith, it can restore marriages. This God kind of faith, it can change your life. This is the God kind of faith. Faith makes deliverance possible. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. 
It says, for by grace ye are saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You were saved by grace, but through faith. Without faith, you couldn't have been saved. Grace is available to save you. But you need faith to stand up and say, Jesus, I receive you. Amen. There is nothing in this world that cannot answer to faith. There's no challenge you have that faith cannot change. None. Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 4 tells us the just shall live by faith. Now I want to go to a, to a section here that I pondered about. Luke chapter 22 verses 31 and 32. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Now, I want us all to read it together. Three, two, one, go. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Stop there for a second. Let's ponder through that scripture again. Jesus called a man that had been with him and said, Satan desired to have you sometimes don't you feel like satan is really messing with you when i read this scripture i said our children will not fall prey to the enemy in the name of jesus our spouses will not fall prey to the enemy in the name of jesus verses 32 says jesus responds to to, to tells him but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not who is that child miss baby will pray him back in the name of jesus who, that spouse will pray that spouse back. He says, I have de Satan desired to sift you as with. This God kind of faith, very important. He says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. So you can pray somebody's faith back. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brothers. It was first Simon, which was a shaking rift. When he came back from that experience, he became Peter, the rock. Faith can be held. You can hold faith. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. You can hold faith. You can hold faith. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith. So you can take faith. Faith is, tell somebody, faith is takeable. Come on, say it loud and care. Faith is takeable. You can take faith. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench what? Oh, fiery darts of the, of the wicked one, of the enemy. Faith is a weapon. Faith is a weapon. Without faith, you will be defeated. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith. It is a weapon. Not to be played with. If you do not have faith, the fiery darts of the enemy can hit you. That's why you meet a person where it seems that life is just turned upside down. One, one arrow after the other, after the other, after the other. No, take the shield of faith. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, I declare... No weapon formed against me, be it spiritual, be it physical, be it mental, whatever it is, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Faith is a weapon. There are always giants in every man's promised land. So if God has promised you things, there will always be giants in the promised land. So make no mistake, there will be giants. There will be giants in the promised land. There will always be red seas to cross. There will always be fiery fires you have to go through. That's why you need faith. You need faith to enter into anything God has packaged for you. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verses 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. There is a fight you must fight. It is a good fight. Please, brothers and sisters, which one is a good fight? A good fight is the one you win. Bros, come. 
if I put you with Goliath just physically as you are, is that evil me? He said evil me. <laughs> Go and sit down. <laughs> a good fight is a one that you have been declared the winner. A good fight is the one that you have been declared the winner. That's why God's word is very important. God's word says that you are the winner. It is a good fight. But you must still what? Fight. With faith. You have been called. You have been called. You have been called. It says fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Nothing will take eternal life from you. Nothing. Don't say amen. Say amen for yourself. Nothing will take it from me. Nothing. I will fight this good fight of faith in the name of Jesus. Faith is the victory. Everybody say the victory. First John 5, 4. It says, for whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. Let's all read it together. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Now, if you are not born of God, you are an automatic defeated candidate. There's no point going on the mountain. It is a waste of time. There's no point asking us for prayer. It's a waste of time. If you are not born of God, you are defeated already. So how do I... Activate this faith. How? We talked about faith in Romans chapter 10, verses 17. It says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The voice of God is powerful. If you hear God's voice, it will produce faith in your spirit. If you read the book of Acts, and you see where the Lord Jesus appeared... A light from heaven appeared unto Saul. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Eh? Who art thou, Lord? Who art thou? Now, when you hear God's voice, it activates faith on the inside of you. It activates faith. Now, you can read the word. It is good. Yearn to hear God's voice. When you hear God's voice, it changes the game. Saul, go, breathing threats, going to kill folks. Hear the voice of God. And was converted, he believed. So tonight, I, this morning, I'm praying that we will hear God's voice starting now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 21. It says, And thy ears shall hear a word behind you, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Turn ye to the right hand. And when ye turn and, and, and when ye turn to the left, amen. When you hear God's voice, it it produces faith on the inside of you. When you start to read God's word, start to declare those words. Go home and start reading. My ear shall hear a voice behind me. My ear shall hear a voice behind me. Oh, my ear is not blocked in the name of Jesus. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. My ears will hear heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. I will hear God for myself in the name of Jesus. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee. Saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 6, verse 63. John, uh, Isaiah, I'm sorry, John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? They are spirit and they are life. Brethren, these words are game changers. When you speak the word, when you speak the word, when you speak the word, it is spirit. It's not mere. It is spirit. It is spirit and life. The word will quicken any dead thing. Are you struggling in your marriage? Speak the word. Speak the word. Are you single? Speak the word. Speak the word. Are you sick in your body? Speak the word. Are you weak? Speak the word. 
the word will change you from the inside out. An example of faith was shown us here in the book of Mark chapter 2 verses 3 and 5. Mark chapter 2 verses 3 and 5. Mark chapter 2 verses 3 and 5. It says, A group of friends wanted to see Jesus because their friend had an issue. Okay, it says, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. So four friends carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they climbed the roof to drop their friends. Though there was something about those four, people, four folks. They had heard the word. They had seen what Jesus could do. Even though there were opposition, they said, because we know what you can do. The word has entered us, so we will drop this, our friend, to the word himself. And the Bible says, Jesus saw their faith. And he said unto them, unto the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Tonight, whatever will not allow you to touch Jesus, press, press, press in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Mark 9, verses 11, Mark 9, verses 11. And they asked him, saying, I'm sorry. No, that's not what I wanted. I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 9. This is how life is for a lot of us. Can we all read it? Three, two, one, go. Don't you feel this way sometimes? There are just opportunities, but ah, something always goes wrong. Something always goes wrong. The four guys that took their friends through the roof are teaching us a lesson. That irrespective of the opposition, irrespective of how tough things might be, Break the roof if you have to. If you have to. We also read the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says that there was a crowd and she could not, she, she could not reach Jesus. So she had to press through. There's a door open unto every one of us. And I pray in the name of Jesus from today, we will begin to break through and press through in the name of Jesus. There's a characteristics of faith that we must apply to our lives. From the book of Proverbs chapter 30, verses 30. Every Christian has a lion in them. Every Christian has a lion in them. Everyone that is a believer has a lion in them. The Bible says, a lion which is the strongest amongst beasts turneth not away for any. Are you challenged today and you feel like things are tough? Let the lion arise in you. When the lion comes into you, you don't see defeat. You do not see defeat at all. You keep pressing forward. You keep pressing forward. You keep pressing forward. The woman said, if I can but just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And what happened? She was healed. We call her the woman with the issue of blood. No, she's not. She's the woman that is healed. The healed woman that was previously the woman with the issue of blood. Can you imagine Mr. Bartimaeus coming in and we call him blind Bartimaeus? He will say, if we don't have faith, I'm going somewhere else. He says, no, I'm not blind. I can see. So tonight, the question is, or this morning, are you blind? Ask the Lord for sight. Are you sick? Ask the Lord through his word for healing. Are you struggling? Ask him for strength. Are you living in pain? Ask him to give you some spiritual epidural. The book of Joshua chapter 1 verses 8. The Lord says to Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, verses 8, as we wrap up this morning. 
this kind of faith, this kind of faith, this God kind of faith is what we need for this end time. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in it. I want us to rise up on our feet as we begin to pray. I just want you to pray for yourself. Lift up your voices and say, Lord, let me trust your word like never before. In the name of Jesus, let me trust you like never before. Let my confidence be in your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Let my confidence be in your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, let me not live a mediocre life. Let me not live an average life. Let me live. Let me live by faith in the name of Jesus. Let my life be a reflection of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it not be said that I lived a life that, had, that was void of faith. Jesus said, shall the son of man find faith on earth when he cometh? Let, Lord, find faith in me. Let my faith shake the heavens in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that though your word will have roots in my heart. That I will have confidence in you like never before. Oh, praseledisha matayarabas. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. I need your help. I need your strength. I need your healing. I need your touch. I need you today, today, today. Like blind by the miles, he cried, Jesus Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Lord, this morning I cry for mercy. I cry for mercy. You heard the man that was blind and you gave him sight. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus. I ask for you to answer me today. Answer me. Connect me to this life of faith. In the name of Jesus, connect me to this life of faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith I pray in the name of Jesus that I will begin to live by faith in the name of Jesus lift up your voices brethren declare in the name of Jesus from today I will begin to live by your word I will begin to live by your word I will begin to live by your word in the mighty name of Jesus I will live by your word in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I will live by your word make a dura batera bagada Maze libra do sarida bakata manda libra do sarida gadabas oh braga de bagada